Hi, good afternoon, students. We'll be giving a quick brief instruction on the overview of the ANTSC 156 Charlie, the Phoenix Terminal. Um, Phoenix Terminal is a quad band terminal. What that means is it can operate in X band, C band, KU, and KA band. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about signal entry panel. Everything you see right now, all this back, except the tunnel now, not the tunnel. Everything on the outside of it is a signal entry panel. Some of the capabilities are fiber optic, and seven fiber optic ports. Five of them are direct fibers to the CV, CV MCU2 fiber optic modem, and you have two of them directly to the ETSSP, your multiplexer. You also have six CDI connections, one, two, three, four, five, six at the bottom. All six of those will go directly into the ETSSP, your multiplexer. Uh, maximum data rate of the CDI ports are 4608. Maximum data rate of fiber optic ports, 8.192 megs. You also have a uh, PMU. It's just basically a remote control that actually manually brings up the antenna and actually tracks actually you actually manually track the actual satellite with it. You have an emergency shutoff switch. Emergency shutoff switch is basically used in any case of emergencies. Anytime may say terminals on fire, terminals are electric shocking someone, you come over, bump the switch, shuts everything off. Also, another thing you may see is the 50, 50 meter reel. We can remote this terminal 50 meters away from it and actually utilize a tough book or a handheld computer and operate the entire terminal from that point. Uh, what we're going to do now is start going around. We're going to talk about the individual bays. You've got six different bays. Each individual bay has equipment it utilizes in order to operate the terminal. So if you come with me, let's proceed on to this right side. All right, on the passenger side, on the passenger side, you start with bay one, two, three. And just go all the way around the terminal to four, five, and six. And that's how the bays. All right, in this first bay, we're going to talk about the patch panels. you got two different patch panels. You have the Comslex as ETSSP patch panel, and you have the ETSSPs themselves. ETSSP number one, ETSSP number two. ETSSP is just nothing but your satellite hub multiplexer. Your multiplexer, your multiplex and deep multiplex. You learn a little bit of that in the intro. You should learn a little bit in uh, LMST. And in Phoenix, this is what you have. If you notice, it says satellite hub multiplex, the same name that it utilized in LMST. But these are your both multiplexers. Your fiber optic patch panel, I mean, I'm sorry, your ETSSP slash com, comsec patch panel. And this comsec patch panel, if you have a KIV-19, KY-99, you can also patch those in and actually encrypt your transmission or encrypt your actual comsec or audio transmission. Um, in Bay 2, we're going to move over. We're going to talk about the RF slash IF patch panel. And the RF slash IF patch panel, it's how we, how we incorporate signal flow. In other words, it's how we get our signal from our modem to our IF combiners, from our IF combiners to our up converters, from our up converters to our HPAs. Basically, the transmit side of signal flow. Everything from this point over covers transmit. Everything from here over covers receive. If you notice, it says receive, receive, transmit, transmit, and in the middle it says test. On the receive, you come back from your actual antenna into your down converters, from your down converters into your splitters. Also, in the middle, when we talk about test, we talk about the test translator. As you may remember from LMST, you have two types of loopbacks. We do the satellite loopback and the test translator loopback. When you utilize this test translator loopback, you test all your equipment on the ground to your actual, at, to your actual satellite. I'm sorry, that's all incorrect. You test everything in a translator loop, test everything on all your equipment on the ground. In a satellite loop, you test everything from your terminal up to the satellite and back to you. In other words, you ensure your side of the operation is good to go before you actually connect with the other side of the operation, whoever will be your distant end trouble. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, there you go. We're going to move from, sorry. Next up, you have the spectrum analyzer. Just basically a piece of test equipment. We utilize to actually determine whether we're tracking on the bird, where our signal or receiving a signal, or we transmit a signal. For the most part, it's a big piece of test equipment that we utilize and it helps us a lot and cuts out a lot of the guessing, wondering, hey, is this component transmitting this component? It's, a lot of, it's something that we utilize to check a lot of our test points. Next two things, we have our HPAs, HPA1, HPA2. We apply our high voltage, our RF power, and our power to the actual HPA. This will get us our information from the actual terminal to the satellite in space. Basically, just a big amplifier, like kind of like a volume knob on the radio. You turn it up, the louder and louder it gets, the more power it puts out. You adjust your attenuation, the lower your attenuation is, the more power you'll put out. Moving from bay two, we're going to move over to bay three. In the bay three, we have several components. We just talked about a test translator. At the very top, you have your test translator. Next, you have your ACU, your antenna control unit. Then you have your five different modems. Modem one, two, three, four, and five. Um, up below that, you have your up converters. Up converter number one, up converter number two. You have your down converters. Down converter number one, down converter number two. And last but not least, you have actual drawer. Now this drawer, for temporary cases, you can actually have your tough book and operate your terminal from your tough book here. 
You can take your tough book out, sit it here, operate the trommel. Right now, our tough book is currently remoted into our Phoenix shed. But if it wasn't remoted our Phoenix shed, we'd actually hook up the actual Ethernet port and our power cable. We can operate the entire trommel from this location. It's three different locations. You can actually connect that tough book. One in the signal entry panel, one here, and one also inside of the cab. Okay? Yes, sir. Up to this point, do we have any questions on any of the components I've covered? Good to go. Um, talk about DC power early in the classroom. At DC power, this is how you connect DC power. You take this power cable out this hatch, you want to insert the power cable. Once power cable is inserted, if you notice on this switch, it says on, it says off. All you'll do is take this switch, turn it on. Once you turn it on, turn the vehicle on, raise the RPMs anywhere between 1,000 to 1,200, engage the throttle lock, then you start your power procedures. You start your power, power procedures then, you're able to utilize vehicle power. All right, let's track on, let's move on around to the other side of the terminal. All right, on this side of the terminal, you have bay four, five, and six. Also have your, both your power outlets. You have your AC power outlet and your DC power outlet. Um, when we get into this power distribution panel, we'll talk about the different power sources. In this first base, be noticed not a lot of switches. This is our ECU, Environment Equipment Control Unit. Um, only thing you can do for the most part is reset it and check for any alarm indicators on it. But it's not a lot of operator involvement here. What you do is just monitor and make sure you don't have an alarm and everything is working properly. All right, in base five, in bay five, we have a couple other components. First up, you have your RCI. RCI is basically the brains of the terminal. Without the RCI, you can't communicate with any piece of any component within the terminal. Without being able to communicate with any component in the terminal, you can't operate the terminal. So that's why we call it the brains. Normally, we have a panel over this, but since we do a lot of troubleshooting with this terminal, we do a lot of actual putting in errors, taking out errors, letting students get in there and solve whatever errors we put in. We take off this panel, and we have, what we do is we reset the RCI that allows it for it to quickly reboot. But with that panel up, though, you more have to wait about two minutes every time, two minutes for that RCI to reboot. Below that, you have your PDU. PDU, notice you have the actual circuit breaker switch, several different locations. You have generator power, external power, vehicle power, and vehicle power. Two locations for vehicle power. There's no difference between vehicle power number one and vehicle power number two. Both of them indicate vehicle power. Under each power source, you see a little LED. That LED is lit. It lets you know that you have that power source engaged, so it kind of cuts out a lot of the guessing. Quite sure if you utilize vehicle power, you understand. You're like, well, I got a vehicle running, so that's definitely vehicle power. External power is commercial power or shore power. In other words, anything that falls inside 120 to 220 volts. 120, 120 to 115 to 120, and then you have 220 to 240. In other words, European power. Commercial power, US power, or European power. That's what falls in the external range. Generator power, you have your two 803 generators. We have one here, one here. Um, it's a preferred method on the usual operations in the TM. It states that we need to utilize an 803 generator. That's what it expects to utilize, but if you have those other power sources, if you have an emergency case, you can use any power source. Um, powering up the terminal, you start, it's a simple process. You start with the main breaker, move to the ECU, motor drives, equip load number one, equip load number one, number two, and HVA. HVA being the last. In other words, kind of like an H method. You go up. Power down procedures is just a reverse process, starting with HPAs. Put load two, put load one, motor drive, ECU, main breaker. The only one I skip is the de icer. The de is utilized in very cold weather. If the antenna freezes up or if you see ice start to build up around the antenna, you turn on the de icer. All it is is just here. It heats up the actual panels, melts down the ice. Once the ice is melted down, you're ready for operation. Um, that covers basically everything in um, Bay 5. Let's move over to Bay 6. In Bay 6, you have your LMA controller, your um, Rubidium frequency system, CDU, CV, MCU2, or your fiber optic modem, and then you have your actual crypto cages. If you notice, not crypto cages, we don't have any crypto. We keep it locked away. But you have four slots for your KIV 19s. One, two, three, four. If you notice, you can actually lock them away. You have a slot for your KY99. Uh, Voice encryption, KIV 19 for transmission encryption. And last but not least, you have a slot for your actual CYZ 10, your uh, DTD or your data transfer device, your field kilo. You use, it was built when the Phoenix was built, it was built for the CYZ 10, but you can utilize the SKL also. So you learn SKL and Spartan T, no big deal, SKL and CYZ 10 can be utilized. 
fiber optic modem is really simple. I showed you the five fiber optic connections on that signal entry panel. All five of them will go here, and what it does is take that fiber optic signal, converts it to an actual balanced NRZ signal. That balanced NRZ signal goes to the ETSSP, and at the ETSSP, that signal is actually multiplexed together and is created to another balanced NRZ signal, or it's kept the same, depending on if it's balanced or it's unbalanced, whatever coming in. But balanced NRZ comes out CV, CV, MCU2, and ETSSP utilizes balanced NRZ. But you do have a such thing as unbalanced NRZ. LNA controller, they determine which direction antenna you're using. 2.4 meter for the external antenna. You use the LNA 1, use the 2.4, use the LNA 2, use the external antenna. Um, that covers pretty much everything in the 